Well, President Moon Jae-in has embarked on a trip to Singapore and Papua New Guinea to attend major regional <laughs> forums and hold summit meetings with various global leaders. South Korea and Japan, however, uh, unlikely to hold bilateral talks. Uh, there is an issue. This uh, recent South Korean Supreme Court ruling, which ordered a Japanese company to pay compensation for wartime forced labor. And uh, on the entertainment front, uh, the uh, Uber popular uh, band, the K pop group BTS's performance on a Japanese TV show was canceled after one of the band members was photographed in a shirt allegedly uh, making uh, fun of atomic bomb victims. So, to just discuss all of these issues in more detail, get some analysis, we're very pleased to have joining us the director of the Asia Institute, Dr. Emmanuel Pastrick. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Pleasure to be here. Long time no see. Uh, this is a hot button issue. Could be considered pretty sensitive. The Supreme Court, as I just mentioned, uh, they acknowledged the rights of these former Korean laborers. Uh, forced labor uh, was a ruling uh, for this uh, damages right. suit. Uh, Nippon Steel and Sumitomo uh, and Metal Corporation, the defendants here, ordered to pay 100 million won to each victim. Those are some of the details of the case. Diplomatically, it's resulted in fallout. The foreign minister, Taro Kano, saying that uh, this is an outrage. Uh, they've already addressed this issue, right. and uh, they may uh, go to the ICJ, the Inter International Court of Justice, to uh, resolve this. Uh, what do you make of this ruling and sort of the, uh, I guess, the uh, fallout afterwards? Right. Well, in terms of the ruling, I think most, many, many experts feel this is incredibly late, that this ruling should have been made many, many years ago. It comes back to the 1965 uh, uh, normalization and the was it the the um, uh, Japan Korea uh, Korea Japan uh, base uh, Kibon uh, Choyak so the right. the agreement for n n uh, normalization of relations so in that agreement uh, it was agreed by a tiny number of people uh, that nobody in Korea would have the right, that a small grant of, I guess, about $200 million would mean no Koreans had any rights to sue either the Japanese government or Japanese corporations, and that anything that had taken place before 1911 also was off the table forever. Uh, so the Japanese government has essentially held that this holds uh, true, and the Korean government has, to a large degree, uh, gone along with that, although there's been some opposition. So it sounds totally legitimate to me that those victims should be allowed to at least seek compensation. Uh, and But there, there are some, some twists to it, right? I mean, there are issues, of course, Japanese. I mean, Japanese also have often not been compensated for the damages that they suffered. Uh, and it was, of course, not only Koreans who were right. suffered uh, for these uh, these sorts of uh, uh, indignities and, and, and deaths. And, and right. But the counter to that would be the Korean Supreme Court. Right. Uh, their jurisdiction would be um, assessing cases dealing with Korean citizens and not, not the uh, Japanese victims. Of course, the, there were untold many of them right. as right. well. So uh, I it, it oh, doesn't I, seem I, like I an equal agree. equivalency, right? With uh, the... Well, I, I just mentioned the Japanese case uh, for the simple reason uh, that there's a there's a tendency to try and reduce this to a Japan versus Korea issue. And as somebody who's worked, lived in both Japan and, and Korea for very long period of time, I mean, seven years and 11 years, uh, I'm very resistant to that. There are many Japanese uh, who felt very strongly that Japan, that the Koreans should be compensated from the beginning, uh, in, uh, in the, even in the 1950s and 60s. And on the other hand, uh, there were uh, people in, in Korea uh, who were very much involved in the sort of military industrial complex uh, of Sumitomo and Mitsubishi as well in Manchuria. So it was, it was wasn't a totally pure split between Korea and Japan. Okay, so then the question lies uh, with Seoul mm. and Tokyo at right. loggerheads over this so issue, over countless other issues. We're right. not going to go into things right. like Tokdo or right. sexual slavery or right. visiting the Yasukuni Shrine. Uh, just in this particular context, right. uh, the threat to take this to the ICJ, right. uh, this idea that these diplomats now are going to be engaged in sort of a tit-for-tat type of right. e either with statements or with actual tangible action. How would would you like to see this resolve uh, this dispute resolved? Uh, well, I think it's it, that's probably impossible for either diplomats or high officials to resolve. Uh, if there was a resolution, I think it would have to come uh, from a uh, rather 
uh, intense and thoughtful discussion between uh, citizens and and intellectuals with some understanding of the history, mm-hmm. uh, which has to a large degree been erased. Uh, and to understand what drove the war, uh, how companies like what Sumitomo and Mitsubishi were, what they were involved in, and how they they led the way uh, towards this uh, uh, disaster, and and even more importantly, uh, what happened after the war. Why in 1965 this uh, arrangement was signed, in which basically uh, Koreans uh, lost the right uh, to seek compensation. Let's address the. Uh Hmm? other major issue right. uh, at hand here and then maybe kind of wrap things up and uh, kind of get your final thoughts on this. Uh, the the band BTS, everybody knows them. Uh, I think uh, right. they're legions of fans, very passionate, uh, very supportive of them. Right. Uh, they have a fan base in Japan as well. Uh, the controversy is that there is a local TV station in Japan, uh, TV That's Asahi. They're right. saying, you guys were scheduled to perform no longer the case. We're angry because uh, one of the members of this band uh, apparently wore a t-shirt that showed a photo of a mushroom cloud. This was on uh, Korea's Liberation Day, right. and it had the atomic bombing of Nagasaki uh, depicted. Uh, the words liberation, our history, patriotism. You can make different interpretations of what that shirt right. was trying to convey, and you might right. take it in a negative way. Uh, this was um, resulting in a lot of fallout, uh, largely, I think, driven by maybe sort of the ultra-right-wing crowd and the contingent in Japan. Uh, right. Making a mountain of a mohill, what is this controversy? It, it's big because it involves BTS, which is a beloved right, right. Um, worldwide now right, uh, right. star band. Well, it, it certainly seems like a mountain out of a molehill. I mean, there were two incidents. One was this T-shirt in which in the corner, in very tiny corner, there's a picture of a mushroom cloud uh, along with other images, uh, which is actually somewhat ambiguous what it means in that context. Uh, and the second was the case in which one of the members was holding uh, a hat which had a sort of a Nazi style insignia on it, uh, which was also, he probably was totally unaware of what it meant, uh, and maybe it was in bad taste, but it's very hard in both cases to see any intentionality in either case. Um, so uh, it looks to us, it looks to me, uh, like it's a uh, tit for tat, right? That the immediate response uh, to the ruling about the conversation, Sumitomo uh, and others, uh, was to find some way to economically uh, hurt uh, certain Korean uh, interests. And particularly, I think this is a sensitive one on the Japanese side because uh, a lot of Japanese actually like uh, BTS mm-hmm. and other groups. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a considerable amount of sympathy uh, for Korean culture among ordinary Japanese. I think the odds that these random pictures from three years ago uh, would have stirred up some sort of emotional response on the part of ordinary Japanese is basically zero. Yeah, and and the context of this also is it's very telling that Mm -hmm. BTS's management agency, uh, Mm -hmm. the members of the group, uh, after the whole controversy erupted and people started talking about it online, they did not... um, by any means, issue some kind of formal apology to the Japanese government right, or to right. the Japanese people. They pretty much stuck to their guns. They issued an anodyne statement basically saying, you know what, we're going to do our best. We're going to perform for our fans. We're going to mm. uh, have some plans to come out. There's been talk about some previous recordings that they've recently made that are right. sort of c- construed to be also not very favorable to Japan. So I think BTS with their army and, and right. that, that legion of fans all over the world will automatically take their side and the full might and power of J- Japan's PR machine wouldn't necessarily be able to override that right. and, and cost uh, BTS any popularity worldwide, right, ultimately, right. Well, I, if that's their aim. Uh, of course, I, I don't know the details about their response. Uh, I personally think they could make a response, right? Either to identify, I mean, it's easy to apologize. I apologize all the time. It doesn't really hurt you at all. Uh, even if you're not really particularly responsible to say, I'm really sorry about the atomic bombing and the Korean Japanese and Korean victims thereof, that doesn't really hurt you very much. Uh, having this hat with a little uh, I- I- you know, uh, insag- insignia of a death head that was from Germany, that's also pretty easy to apologize. So it's unfortunate uh, if they don't take that simple step. But they could also uh, go further in addressing uh, history issues or talking about it. I think it, uh, I would welcome that. Uh, but I, I doubt that that's, uh, they see that as 
their their particular responsibility. Right, and and for them to be sort of caught up in this is probably something not that uh, that they uh, wished for, but right. uh, they obviously have uh, certainly if if anything, you cannot doubt their uh, social media acumen and, and their Absolutely. ability to to curry favor with their contingent. Uh, Bottom line, final question here. Uh, what do you think has to be done? There, there seems to be some extremist uh, voices right. that are sort of driving the conversation and pulling uh, people who are maybe in the middle, uh, one side or the other. Uh, do you hope that things will sort of kind of simmer down in terms of tensions? Well, uh, I, I think they probably will. I think they probably will. We have this periodically happening over the last uh, 20, 30 years. We have these like cycles um, uh, but I think it also requires some effort, uh, both on the Korean side and the Japanese side, to have especially discussions between citizens uh, and to have regular discussions. Uh, and, to, and on the history issue or World War II and the colonial period, to have a very accurate uh, discussion about what really happened, um, which is not always flattering uh, for Korea either. I mean, uh, I think Japan overall has a much larger responsibility, uh, but uh, Korea was, I mean, many Koreans at different levels were wrapped up in this. It was a very... You're talking uh, about the pro-Japanese collaborator Well, I think that's what, I, what I'm referring okay. to. It, it's a domestic issue as well. Uh, so I would say uh, that we do have to sort of face historical issues, that it is, it is a Japan-Korea issue, and that's extremely serious, and Japan has an enormous responsibility, but it is also a Korea-Korea issue. Well, uh, we know that uh, these issues flare up from time to time, almost like clockwork. It is a pattern that uh, we've been right. seeing if you've uh, spent Absolutely. any time observing uh, both countries and this uh, very uh, tricky and complicated bilateral yeah. relationship. Uh, as always, uh, we appreciate your insights, uh, your analysis on this, uh, helping us understand the issue better as well. Hope to see you again soon. And uh, once again, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.